the God who told Elijah, go show yourself unto Ahab because I'm going to bring rain unto the land. It's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He doesn't change his mind. If he says he'll save you, he'll not change his mind. If he says he will heal you, he'll not change his mind. If he says he will supply all your need, he will not change his mind. If he says he's going to wipe your tears away, he will not change his mind. If he says refreshing and favor is coming upon your life tonight, he will not change his mind. It will be done. I said it will be done. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he said, and shall he not do it? Or as he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? The word of God will be made good in your life today. Yeah. Fulfilled. Yeah. Performed. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It's coming upon your life. Yeah. Psalm 105 and verse 42. Psalm 105, reading from verse 42. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham, his servant. He remembered his holy promise. You see, when a word comes out of the mouth of God, it's the holy word. It's a holy promise. It's a holy prophecy. It's a holy declaration. And when it is holy, you cannot take anything away from that. It's coming from the mouth of the Almighty. And then it says, he remembered Abraham, his servant. And you must remember that now he remembers Jesus, his son. I said, remember Jesus, his son. When Jesus said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. God must always remember that. And God will always remember that. Your sorrow finished. Penalty finished. Condemnation finished. All the load upon your life, everything finished. Because it is the holy promise of the Lord. And he must and he will always remember Jesus Christ is only begotten son. Look at verse 43 there. In verse 43, and they brought forth his people with joy. And he's bringing you out tonight with joy. And he's chosen with gladness. He gave them the lands of the heathen. And they inherited the labor of the people. That they might observe his statutes. He prepares us for obedience. It, pre it, pre it prepares us for obeying the statutes of the Lord and keep his laws. Somebody there, tell me the last line. Tell me what you are going to say after the prayer tonight. Tell me what's going to happen in the bus, in the car, while you are going back tonight. Tell me tonight before you sleep what will come out of your heart. You will praise the Lord, you will praise the Lord, you will praise the Lord because abundance is coming upon your life. The promises of God are coming upon your life tonight. I want you to look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power. That's how, that's how he blesses people. He blesses people according to his power, not according to your own weakness, not according to your own limitation, but he blesses people according to the divine power he has given unto us, he has given unto, he has given unto, he has given unto me, he has given unto you. How many things has he given you? You are going to claim them tonight. Spiritual blessing you are going to have tonight. Material blessing you are going to have tonight. Healing for every cell of your body you are going to have tonight. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, health, healing, strength in Jesus' name. Total rest and peace of mind. You will sleep well. Nothing will disturb your sleep. 
all those bad, bad things, uh, you know, blowing there and blowing there, walking there, they're taking it away tonight. Because according to his mighty power, divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto whereby are given unto giving unto you, giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers. No onlooker tonight, ye might be partakers. There's no spectator tonight, ye might be partakers. There is nobody in a corner saying they are getting it. I never, uh, I don't finish that sentence. You are partakers tonight in Jesus' name. That he might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What a tissue you have if the Almighty gives you a promise. And what disposition of mind should you have when the Almighty gives you a promise? I'm coming to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And here we're reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. Anything that was hopeless before, turn around now, there's hope tonight. Don't frown anymore. Let your face show that you're hopeful in the Lord. There's hope for you tonight. I said there is hope for you tonight. It says that ye might become, that ye might become, to become means you're living where you were and you're becoming somebody new, somebody different. I said you will become, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. Why? Oh, because he knew that the Almighty cannot lie. And being not weak in faith, why? Because he knew the one that created the whole earth out of nothing can recreate his own body that appeared to be dead now. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Think about that. Hundred years of age. And, and many of us are not up to that age yet. If he did it for him at a hundred years of age, he'll do it for you at 53. He'll do it for you at 60. He'll do it for you at 90. In fact, if you go beyond a hundred, he'll do it for you at 120. Because now it says they staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those who stagger, they're like, uh, they have drunk, uh, you know, some wine. And because of that, they're staggering. No, we have not drunk wine. We have the word of God. We have the mind of Christ. And we have the promises that cannot fail. And therefore, we will not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. What was he doing? He was strong in faith. What was he doing? Giving glory to God and being how persuaded? How are you persuaded tonight? I said, are you persuaded tonight? It says, be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Tonight, able. I said tonight, the Almighty is still able. He says, I am God, and I change not. And you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Something good is going to happen in your life today. We're coming back now, coming back now to First Kings chapter 18, point number two now. The preparation for abundance. The preparation for abundance. I want you to look at uh, chapter 18 of First Kings. I'm reading from verse 2. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. Look at that. Look at that. That's the preparation. Because the Lord had said, go, show thyself unto Ahab. There had not been rain for these three and a half years. 
And God said, I'm bringing rain. And he says, now go and show yourself unto Ahab. There was no doubt in his mind. What if I get to Ahab and make the announcement and then nothing happens? Of course, something must happen. I said something must happen. What if we pray and then we say, God is going to do it. What if nothing happens? Don't talk about that. Something is going to happen. In your life, something is going to happen. A miracle is coming, something is going to happen. And so it says, uh, Elijah went and he sh to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a soft farming in Samaria. Verse 3, and Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave, and he fed them with bread and water. Thank God for a person like Obadiah. And thank God for a person like you. That where you are walking, if they are opposed to God, opposed to the people of God, you will single yourself out. While Jezebel was killing uh, those prophets, Obadiah gathered those ones he could find together and hid them in a cave and was feeding them morning and evening. Look at verse 6. And, and Ahab said to Obadiah, go into the land, unto all the fountains of water, and unto all the brooks, for adventure, we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive, that we lose not all the coast. So they divided the land between them uh, to pass uh, throughout it. And Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. Elijah met him. Elijah met him. The prophet will meet you. He'll meet you with a message. And when the message comes to you, it will take effect in your life in Jesus' name. And he knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Look up here, look up here. Behold, Elijah is here. Uh, you know, he could have been afraid because, you know, three and a half years now, there have been no rain. And even the king left the throne and he was searching for water, even for the animals. And he said, I'll go there and then you, but I'll go the other way. But shh, Elijah was not afraid. He said, go tell your master, Elijah is here. I pray that the spirit of Elijah will come upon you. The boldness of Elijah will come upon you. The courage of Elijah will come upon you. You'll not be walking with your heads down. What's the matter with you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stand up straight. And then square your shoulders. And look at Obadiah and announce, I'm going to see Ahab today. And when you see Ahab, miracle will happen. And then look at verse 9, and he said, What have I seen? That thou wouldest de deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord, that he is Ahab, has not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there. Well, to start with, Elijah was around somewhere. He was at the brook. There wasn't any kind of castle there. There wasn't any covering there. He was right in the open there. And yet, Ahab searching for him with all the people he could send to search. They never discovered where Elijah was. They will not discover where you are. They will not see your house. They will not see you to hurt you. Your life is secured in the hand of the Almighty God. And then he came to the house of um, to the house of the widow. 
And over there, there wasn't here, that woman was just a widow woman. And there wasn't mighty great security there. And there were no bodyguards there for him. And yet, Ahab never saw him. How do you think that those people will ever see you? I said, how do you think those people will ever see you? Your life is secured. Your family is secured. Your business secured. They will not bring you down. I said, they will not bring you down. And when they said, he's not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go Tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Look at verse 12. And it shall come to pass. As soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. Look at this. Elijah did not know this himself. That he will not die. That the spirit of the Lord will come and take him like a preview of the rapture and take him away. Elijah did not even know that. And somebody called Obadiah already prophesied. On your life, your enemies will prophesy. The people you think, well, he doesn't like me. It's working with King Ahab. It's working with this and working with that. They cannot say anything negative about you. Any negative thing they said, all that one will go down the drain. But then there's going to be a mighty prophecy coming from their mouth. It will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. And then you said, so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. And then he began to tell Elijah how he feared the Lord. But look at verse 15. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him when? Today. Today. Are you ready for today? I said, are you ready for today? Something must happen today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, Ahab and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Are thou he that troubles Israel? Well, come to verse 21. And in verse 21, and Elijah came unto all the people. You know what had happened? Elijah said, don't say that. You are the one troubling Israel, but go and gather. He gave him a command. He gave Ahab the king. He gave him a command. Go and gather all the people together. And Ahab now ran errands for Elijah. They were run errands for you. I said they were run errands for you. Get ready. The word of authority will come out of your mouth. The word of power will come from your mouth. And then Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You know what Elijah was telling them? was telling them, you say that you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and here you are, you're serving Baal. How are you halting between two opinions? One side, you go to God. The other side, you go to Baal. He was telling them what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. 
That's the message he was giving them. And that's the message we still have today. We cannot serve God and mammon. We decide for Christ wholeheartedly and fully, entirely today in Jesus' name. We will not be halting between two opinions. And then uh, Elijah gave them a test. Okay, all these uh, prophets of Baal come to one side. And they were in their hundreds. And Elijah was just one. Uh, sometimes they said, you know, they said if you are in the majority, uh, then you are going to carry the vote. But Elijah alone with God, he was in the majority. Anywhere you go, you're on the Lord's side, you're the majority. Even if the others are up to their hundreds, you're still in the majority in Jesus' name. Come back, come back to chapter 18 of First Kings. Chapter 18 of First Kings. I'm reading here from verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's uh, prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. And let them choose the one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods in the plural, many, many gods, idols. And I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Your God will answer by fire. Look at Vastachi. Eventually, all those people, they tried. They cried. They caught themselves. Nothing happened. Their gods were deaf, dumb, and dead. Idols. Nothing happened. And there are some believers, they fear those prophets of Baal. They fear those people that are worshipping idols. They fear those people that are worshipping wood and stone. And those gods can neither do good nor evil. But our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. I said our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Let's see now in Vastachi. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He wasn't trembling, he wasn't fretting, he wasn't worried, he wasn't anxious. He knew something was going to happen. You are not fretting tonight. You are not worried tonight. You are not anxious tonight. You know something is going to happen. Am I talking your mind? Look at verse 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as were contained two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, all alone by himself, all alone by himself. God will make you a reformer. God will make you a revivalist. God will make you a repairer. And then it says, and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour each on the bone sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And he did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. This is a good evening. And this is your evening. That Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, 
Isaac and of Israel, let it be known when. Let it be known, I said when. This day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then, he will still pray, then, at the close of that prayer, then, immediately after, today, the Lord will answer speedily. The Lord will grant you the request of your heart immediately tonight in Jesus' name. <laughs> then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, people will see the miracle upon you tonight. When all the people saw it, they will see that healing tonight. They will see that manifestation tonight. They will see that power tonight. They fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Tonight is that night. The night of manifestation. The night of power. The Lord has sent us and he said, oh, she go. And as you go, there will be manifestation of favor in your life in Jesus' name. But we're looking for the rain. We're waiting for the rain. We're waiting for a rain of miracles. A rain of power. A rain of refreshing. A rain of revival. And that rain is about to fall now. I said that rain is about to fall now. Point number three, the prayer with assurance. The prayer with assurance. We're coming to First Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He had not even prayed for the rain yet, but he had assurance. We have not even started prayer yet, but you have assurance. Assurance, there's a performance tonight. Assurance, there's a miracle tonight. Assurance that the abundance is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 42. Let me come back to that verse 41. Elijah said unto Elisha, get thee up, tell me. Get thee up, say it aloud. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Look at verse 42. And Ahab went up, tell me. And Ahab went up, tell me out aloud. He believed, he believed. He said, this Elijah, I thought it was my enemy, you are not my enemy anymore. Tell me anything to do, I will do. Because he saw the power. That man prayed and fire came from heaven. And now he's telling us that rain is going to come. He believed. Ahab will not have greater faith than you have. Ahab will not have greater understanding of the miracle working power than you have in Jesus' name. Look at Ahab taking in the word, accepting the word, and knowing it was going to be done. And so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And he put his face between his knees. He was actually praying that was his posture. And said unto his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went, that's the servant, and he looked and said, tell me, tonight, is there going to be anything? Are you going to be like this servant? He said, there's nothing. And he said, go again. You must see something. I said, you must see something. 
uh, the promises of God are yes and amen, you must see something. God is still the same. He has not changed. You must see something. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must see something. Your conscience is telling you, your heart is telling you something is going to happen. You must see something. The windows of heaven are opened unto you. You must see something. The God who cannot lie and the God who said, go show yourself unto Ahab and bring in abundance of rain. He has not lied. He is going to do it. You must see something. And he said, go again. Second time, third time, fourth time. Elijah kept on saying, I have prayed. You must see something. We are praying tonight and you must see something. I will see. What are you? I will see. I said, what are you? I will see. Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. A little cloud. But you know, we're waiting for abundance. Abundance of rain. And he saw a little cloud. That's just the beginning. That thing will expand. That thing will multiply. That thing will grow. He said, I see it and it's like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down. That the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in my life. And it came to pass in your life tonight. And it came to pass in your family tonight. And it came to pass on that uh, child in the hospital tonight. And it came to pass on that neighbor you are concerned about tonight. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was, and there was, and there was, a great rain, James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. James chapter 5, reading from verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And he prayed again, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. We're praying tonight, and the heavens will give rain. Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, Though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Tonight, speedily. Tonight, speedily. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10. Reading from verse 36. It says... For we have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Somebody is receiving that promise tonight. For yet a little while, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And will not tarry. He will come. He'll visit you tonight. He will do it tonight. Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're looking at verse 7. Ask what will happen. It shall be given unto you. Ask. I say what will happen. When will it be given to you? Now. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For for is he going to answer you tonight? Will he do it for you tonight? For everyone that asketh receiveth, 
Those are the words of Jesus. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Verse 11, if ye be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more? How much more? How much more shall your heavenly Father, your Father which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Tonight is the night. Answered prayer tonight. Marvelous answers tonight. Miracles upon your life tonight. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 24. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. You are going to read this for yourself. And when you see you, you put me. One, two, three, go. Say that with assurance tonight. Say it for the third time. Something has happened already. Faithfully see that call it you. He also will do it. Now Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65, and we're reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 65, we're reading from verse, uh, from verse 24. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Tonight, tonight, and it shall come to pass. In your life today, and it shall come to pass. That before the call I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear favor tonight, abundance tonight, miracles tonight, signs and wonders tonight, and the, the remarkable manifestation of the power of God in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. This is the moment now, it shall come to pass. That before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. It shall come to pass. Somebody there. It shall come to pass. Say it. Say it. That before I call, he will answer. And while I am yet speaking, he will hear again, and it shall come to pass that before I call, he will answer. And while I am yet speaking, he will hear. Say it now yourself. Verse 24. One, two, three, go. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Because it will happen. It will happen. It shall come to pass. Say something. Move that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that problem. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. And tonight is that night. Tonight is the night of remarkable manifestation of divine favor upon your life. Upon your life. Upon your life. You came here for something. You'll get more than you came for. For. You'll get more than you came for. You'll get more than you came for. Power, miracle, anointing, authority is there tonight while you are yet speaking. While you are yet speaking. While you are yet speaking, he will hear. He will hear. He will hear. And while even before you talk and before you open your mouth, answer is coming from heaven. Answer is coming from heaven. Answer is coming from heaven. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Don't halt between two opinions. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. He's the eternal one. He's the mighty one. He's the omnipotent one. He's the one that cannot fail. As he said, I shall he not do it. As he spoke, I shall he not bring it to pass. Is this not the day of your miracle? Is this not the day of your power? 
Is this not the day of remarkable manifestation? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. It is. It's the day of the supernatural. It's the day of great power. It's the day of great outpouring. The famine will vanish away. The drought will vanish away. The scarcity will vanish away. The poverty will vanish away. It's a day of abundance. It's a day of a mighty rain. It's a day of a great rain. A day of miracle. A day of power. A day of anointing. Anointing that breaks every yoke. While you are yet speaking, while you are yet speaking, it will hear. He will hear. It will answer. Pray with assurance, it will answer. Even Ahab believed the words of the prophet Elijah. Go up and eat. Wipe it with the tears. Wipe it with the sorrow. Take away all the doubt. Take away all the palpitation of the heart. Take away all the unbelief. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Answered prayer tonight. Manifestation tonight. Fulfillment tonight. That's right. Coming your way. That's right, it's coming your way. Right there, right there, right there. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Point to that problem. Identify that problem. It's going tonight. It's rolled away tonight. A curable disease Healed tonight. Joblessness taken away tonight. Barrenness taken away tonight. Tears wiped away tonight. It shall come to pass. In your life, it must come to pass tonight. In your family, it must come to pass tonight. Remarkable manifestation. Remarkable performance. Remarkable answer to your prayer. Remarkable miracle. Unforgettable. Spectacular. What he's going to do tonight. It's a night of answered prayer. It's a night of manifestation. A night of joy. A night of praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. A night of refreshing. A night of moving every mountain. He says, I'll show you great and mighty things which you didn't know. There's a confirmation to every prayer you pray tonight. Every demand you make tonight, there's a confirmation. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Faithfully see that calleth you. Who also will do it. Faithful, dependable, trustworthy. You see what's called you. 
who also will do it tonight. Performance tonight. Manifestation tonight. Answers to a prayer tonight. Assurance tonight. Abundance tonight. He cannot fail. He has pledged the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus and the word of assurance from Jesus. Whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do. Whatsoever, spiritual, material, physical, domestic, professional, whatsoever you're asking tonight, there is a performance. The fire came down. Immediately, Elijah prayed. And the miracle comes down tonight. With assurance. Manifestation tonight. You're praying to the God that cannot fail. Praying to the God that cannot fail. Expecting the miracle from the God that cannot fail. Move that mountain. Command that evil thing to depart. It has to. Don't leave any stone unturned. Everything that should not be in your life must get out today. Failure out. Defeat out. Sickness out. Oppression out. Poverty out. Joblessness out, barrenness out, he staggered not at the promise of God, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded that what he had promised is able also to perform. See yourself as a favorite of God tonight. A 
and he shows favor on his favorite. Know yourself as a favorite of God tonight. And he shows favor to his favorite. You know he will not fail. You know he cannot fail. You know your prayers are answered tonight. You know you have got what you are asking tonight. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word shall not pass away. Miracle upon your life. Answered prayer, your portion tonight. Those chains are broken. The fetters are broken. The cords tie you in any way. Broken, curse taken away, yokes destroyed. In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered my prayer. God has answered my prayer. That's a manifestation in my life tonight. That's a miracle in my life tonight. Joy has come to my life. Assurance in my life. Somebody there has a miracle. Where is he? Where is she? A confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God who answers prayer. You will never disappoint any of your people. And all the people who are here tonight, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, Lord, I pray there will be a definite transformation, a definite miracle, a definite manifestation in every life here tonight in Jesus' name. Everything they have mentioned in prayer, Lord, I pray, give it to them in Jesus' name. That mountain they said will move, oh Lord, we agree together. That mountain, come out in Jesus' name. All that occasional, perennial problem, it will come now, go. It will come now and go. Lord, I pray, tonight will be the final end. Set your people free. Break every yoke in their lives. And Lord, I pray you grant everyone breakthrough in Jesus' name. Bring open doors before everyone. Lord, I pray poverty to go. Joblessness to go. Barrenness to go. That famine locally there in their personal life, take the famine away in Jesus' name. Provision for every family. Abundance for every family. All the tears you wipe away. And I pray, Lord, every definite sin that has been asked of you concerning anyone here, confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. 
Sickness will not go home with anyone. Sickness, whatever the name, sickness, whatever the description, sickness, however long you have been there, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Attack, affliction, oppression, demonic power, come out in Jesus' name. I pray you turn their sorrow to joy. Wipe their tears away. Bring joy and laughter in every heart. And I pray miracle for everyone. On my right, in front of me there, by my left, at the gallery, for every single person, Lord, miracle confirmation in Jesus' name. Abundance of rain, abundance of miracle, abundance of supply, abundance of benefits, abundance in answer to prayer. Confirm upon every life. Put a song in every mouth. Testimony in every mouth. Lord, every soul here will praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. We are not, we are not through yet. We are not through yet. Check up yourself. The miracle is done. The miracle is done. The miracle is done. Check up yourself. Confirm what the Almighty God has done in your life. Prepare yourself, you have a testimony. And definitely you are going to share that testimony. Just check up yourself to confirm what God has done. Yes, we have received already. That one is sure. Check up yourself, confirm. Confirm what the Lord has done. He has glorified himself. Where is that action of faith? Act it out. Let the action of faith show. The word of power is in us already. Act out your faith. And let God be glorified as you act out that your faith. The servant of the Lord has poured the blessing of heaven upon our soul. Just look around. Check that thing that was there before. Check that thing again. Check it again. You discover that it's no longer there. And as you discover the miracle, just give Jesus a shout of praise for that mighty miracle. Shout of praise that what the Lord has done. And we will rejoice together with you and glorify his name. As we are checking up ourselves for the miracle for what God has done, we're going to have our orchestra. To lead us into the mood of praising God and worshiping Him for the mighty things that the Lord has already done here tonight. Keep checking yourself.
the Lord. I said, praise ye the Lord. Has the Lord so done something in somebody's life? I said, has the Lord done something in somebody's life? The Lord has blessed me. I am as bold as a lion. And our Father in the Lord has told us, whatsoever you speak from today, it will happen. Because what's in you is the word of God. And the Lord said, he will hasten to perform that his word. So don't be afraid. Speak the word. For the miracle has taken place. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the miracle has taken place? Some people are already coming for inter to be interviewed. Something spectacular has happened here tonight. I said something spectacular has happened here tonight. Because this is the atmosphere of God's presence. And in his presence is the fullness of what? Joy. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Your joy will never cease in Jesus' name. I said your joy will never cease in Jesus' name. While we are waiting for the testimonies, we want to still have our orchestra praise God and worship him. And in the midst of worship, more miracles will be taking place.
be the same in Jesus' name. But listen to testimonies online first. It is a night of supernatural wonders, miracles, and healings, and no one is left out. The online viewers are agog with excitement as the mighty power of God is working wonders in their lives. Frank Adaka James from Ikeja, Lagos has testified, I have been healed of a long-standing prostate cancer. Praise God. This testimony is from DCLM YouTube page. Sister Ewi from River State Road. I have been delivered from an unforgiving spirit and also healed from boil that's on my leg. Praise the Lord. Another recipient of God's wonder is Ojo Damilola from Lagos, Nigeria. After the pastor's prayer, healing from urinary tract infection and low white blood cells came to pass. In God's own timing, he brings to pass all that we've prayed for. If only you can just believe as Bosse de Rebecca believed. Still from the online audience, she has testified of how God healed her of 29 years ailment in the breast region after the final amen everything disappeared all the way from london united kingdom sarah garba wrote i want to praise the lord for healing me from a kidney problem that i've been battling with since 2006 may his name be glorified forever and ever in jesus name restoration transformation of lives made as God wrought wonders. Excel from Delta Niger State wrote, I got my salvation in this retreat slash GCK. We now bring to you a striking testimony from Bukhari Taraba, where God has opened the ears of the deaf and the mouth of the dumb. Justice India. Uh, my daughter's name is Safaratu, India. When she was born young, she had never talked. This thing, sincerely, it has paid me. I tried my best in order for her to talk, and then she cannot. And now she read to adult stage. Thank God that this crusade has come to Taraba State and now she got healing. How I know that she has healing is because I tested her to, to, to count in my own language. Then she can able to count. Safara, Oda, Zom, Zom, Nina, Tsuanga. I appreciate the name of the Lord. I also appreciate this is the servant of the Lord. God to continue, give him power to continue for this work. This is my prayer. As physical sicknesses are bowing to the name of Jesus, mental illnesses are also disappearing. Mojisola Olajide from Lagos, Nigeria has testified. Praise God. God delivered me from reoccurring postpartum depression. Jesus is truly with me. Yes, Jesus is truly with us all tonight. As members, workers, invitees are testifying of God's wonders. Mr. John Otoide from Benin City, Edo State testified, I had constipations, but during the prayer of the man of God, I received my healing from the pain and difficulties. Yes. If there is a person to pray, there is a God to answer. Ayelero Emmanuel from FCT Abuja, Nigeria wrote, I had a swelling on my chest region, but after the prayer, the swelling disappeared. Thanks to God. Praise the Lord. Long-standing sicknesses can't stand the power of God. Listen to this testimony of Mr. Felix Usembo, age 80 years old, from Benin City, Edo State. He's had severe chest pain for over 25 years, but during the last year, December, GCK Emmanuel, he believed God when the GS challenged all who had ailments and sicknesses to place their hands on the pain area. 
At the end of the prayers, the excruciating pains vanished and now is healed. Joseph Shedrach from Lagos testified, By the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ after the pastor's message. I used to be an internet froster, but now I am born again. Praise the Lord. We now take you to, we now bring to your screens a testimony of salvation and the transformation of life. Broadcasting now. My name is Smethi Clement. I, I want to thank the Lord how God changed my life in the crusade. Before I lived a life of sin, I was a sinner. I do all sorts of things. I fornicate, I lie. I do all sorts of things. But during the crusades, I came to the crusades. And the man of God said, anyone that wants to give, if you want to give your life to Christ, you stand up. You want to become a new person, a new man, a new woman, a child of God. This is your moment. Just raise up the hand wherever you are. I stood up and they gave me the form I feel. Then that was how my life started changing. I went for the new combat class. When there, after that, they asked us to go to a uh, new to banquet hall for the uh, new combat. I went there, they announced something about the water baptism. Then I knew I have to do it because I made up my mind completely I was going to follow Jesus this time around and forget about all what I was doing. So we went for the water baptism. So after the baptism, that day I went home. When I went home, I feel this joy inside of me as if I went, I want something or someone has given me money. I was happy inside of me, just like that. I feel as if I, I've gotten all that I wanted. Then I noticed that that was the joy of my salvation. Then I was happy. I called my pastor and I told him so many people that I've done my baptism and I'm happy to buy it. Then I praise God for everything because I know that God says in that he takes no pleasure in the death of a sinner. And I know by him keeping me from the time I was a sinner up to this time, from making me to change from my bad ways, he did not want me to perish in my sins. That was why he made me to be one among the people that would come to his family now. And I give him glory for who he is. I praise him for everything. I give thanks and praise to God. Praise the Lord. It's been a night of supernatural wonders. We now return you over to our moderating pastor. Lord, the word is still working. It is just the beginning. The word will start working mighty, mighty wonders in Jesus' name. Are you still checking up yourself? The miracle has been confirmed. No going back, no negotiation. The miracle is done. You have received according to the pronouncement of God's word through his own servant. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We'll have the orchestra still give us some music while we wait for other testimonies.